guys and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steven. Today we're going to be reviewing the Militado ML1868-2. Watchdives.com, they sent me this watch for free. I don't have to send the watch back, but you guys know the deal by now. You're always going to get my full and honest opinion on this channel. And if by the end of this review you find yourself wanting to pick one of these up, I'm going to be leaving a link down in the video description. That is an affiliate link. If you guys use that link, you're not paying any extra. Uh, I will just benefit a little bit from the sale and that helps keep the channel running. The retail price for this watch is $99 US dollars. That's before any taxes or coupons or anything like that. Militado, they do, do go on sale from time to time. So uh, if you're patient, you can get a pretty good deal on these things. And I will leave this code right here, ESCAPE10. That's $10 off your purchase. And I believe you have to spend $150 at the store to get that. So just keep that in mind. The watch comes only in a black dial. However, they do give you options for straps. They give you a nylon strap and then this uh, two-piece nylon strap or fabric strap I would say um, and then they do also offer this with a date window and without a date window so that's nice to see as well. The watch case is made of 316L stainless steel. It has a sapphire crystal with AR coating, screw down crowns, screw down case back, 100 meters of claimed water resistance and the watch is powered by the Seiko VK67 Mecha Quartz movement. So this watch looked pretty familiar. Looks really familiar. And while Militado has broken away from the Boltony homages, uh, people still ask me what I think about these particular models because of the Boltonies that exist. Is the Boltony worth it? Does this one suck? Should you save 50 bucks and just get this one? Well, hopefully I can answer all those questions for you during this review. So let's get into it. But before we do, a quick wrist check today. Wearing the SN0129. Leave a review link right up here for that one. Uh, absolutely been loving this watch and more than I more than I anticipated actually. All right, so let's get into the dimensions. I have a case diameter of 39.1 millimeters, case thickness of 12.2 millimeters, 20 millimeter lug width, lug tip to lug tip of 46.8 millimeters, and sized up on the included strap. Weighs about 69 grams. So I think the size is really nice. It's going to be a size that a lot of people can wear under 47 lug to lug. That's the big dimension there. Uh, 39 millimeters does have kind of a big dial. So, um, but I, I think it does wear really good. And you can see here, it's got a nice curve down to the lugs as well. The case shape, I mean, I'm, I'm convinced it's the same exact case. Um, really, really similar. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, these things are great. They wear really nice and very comfortable as well. Um, yeah, I, I do like it. I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist. And as you can see, I think it wears great. This 39 millimeter chronograph size is just, in my opinion, perfect. It's going to wear good on a lot of wrists. It looks good on my bigger wrist. It's going to look good on smaller wrists as well. Nice curve down to the lugs there. Nice slim profile. Uh, it just looks good. And even on the strap, I think it looks really nice. And it's actually a pretty decent strap. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. Uh, you can see under this oak tree, it is struggling with the reflections. It's really not that bad in real life, but uh, you know you can definitely tell that this one is lacking AR compared to something else, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think otherwise it looks really nice and uh, very legible as well. Sadly, floor is being a little stingy with the sun today. Um, so here it is out from underneath that oak tree. So there you can see it, uh, no direct sunlight. Hopefully if it does peek out, but it doesn't look like it's going to, I'll get you a better shot. But uh, yeah, that's how it looks. I think it actually looks okay. Again, coming across on camera, it looks completely different in real life. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I think there is uh, enough AR coating on the crystal. Uh, it definitely could be better. Uh, the Baltony has better AR coating. Um, but yeah, I think this one is actually pretty decent. Uh, let's go throw down some straps and we'll get back to this review. And here we are on a leather rally strap. This is one off of my undone. Uh, nice strap. Can't buy them really, so it doesn't really matter. But that gives you an idea of what it might look like. And uh, I think it does look pretty good. Looks really good. I've mainly been using this watch out in the yard. And I wanted something light and comfortable and easy to use and clean. Um, so I grabbed this Barton silicone strap, just a plain silicone strap, and orange, and I actually think that looks pretty good. This is what I've been wearing it on mostly. And here we are on an elastic strap, single pass, so there's one layer underneath the watch there, and it's still hugging the wrist very nicely. This is super comfortable, and I think this combo actually looks really, really good. I love just a plain, simple khaki strap. I think it looks really good. What do you guys think of that? 
And here we are on a double pass nylon strap. And this is a Cincy Strapco SF2. Uh, it's a very thin nylon strap, so you still do have two layers underneath the watch there, but uh, pretty low profile still. I think that is, it's just a great combination. This is their Admiralty Gray. Um, yeah, it, it looks really, really good. Um, I like these nylon straps so much that I bought two of them, uh, same exact color. Um, so yeah, that, that's how much I like this color. Uh, I think it just works on a lot of watches, including this one. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, let's go back inside and let's get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about the case finishing. So case finishing is super simple. It is a fully bead blasted case here. You can see really nice and smooth bead blasting. I have no issues with it at all. It hides fingerprints. It hides scratches pretty good. You can see here, um, I, I've been using this watch out in the yard. So anytime I go out and do yard work, this is the watch I grab, uh, and it's still holding up very nicely. No scratches really on the case. A little bit of scratching on the crown here, but that's about it. Um, everything else looks pretty good. Again, very, very simple case finishing. It's not fancy at all. Uh, nice big crown here, which I'm a, bit, a huge fan of. I love big crowns. This one is nice and big and grippy. Um, same with these pushers. They're nice and simple and just really easy to use. Flipping it over to the case back, this is where you do see a little bit of a difference. You have your Militado branding and Militado logo. No spec sheet or anything like that, but a simple screw down case back. Again, nice and smooth, nice and comfortable. I've got no issues with it at all. Uh, yeah, it wears very comfortably. And again, really nice case profile there. Keeps it nice and slim on wrist. Uh, and I think it looks good. All right, so let's talk about the crystal. First things first, test it for a sapphire. This sapphire crystal. So it is a double dome piece of a sapphire crystal. And this is really where the difference comes into play between this and the Baltany. Uh, this does have AR coating on it. Uh, it's just not as good or not as strong as the Baltany. So I'm going to bring the Baltany in here. And hopefully I can show you guys what I'm talking about. There you go, right there. So there's there's my light. You can see the Baltany is very, very clear. The dial looks darker. Uh, there's the window there, so there you can see the two side by side. That really goes to show you how good the AR coating is on the Baltany. Now, will I, what I will say is Baltany crystals in general are excellent. They are fantastic, and they're some of the best crystals I've ever seen. So don't, consider, don't take this to mean that the Miltado crystal is bad, because it's not. Next to the Baltany... Uh, any crystal is going to look pretty bad. So uh, just keep that in mind. It is, it's a fine crystal. It's, it's good. Um, it does have clear anti-reflective coating on it. It's just not as much air coating as the Baltany has. So um, yeah, I think the crystal in this is good. It's standing, you know, on its own, it's a really good crystal. Standing next to the Baltany, it's just an okay crystal. All right, getting real close. We'll talk about the dial here. The dial is fully printed. Uh, really nicely done though. I've, I, I have no issues with the printing on this. You can see all the markings. They're kind of a silver color. They're not white. They're silver. Uh, so they do look really good getting up close. You can see how crisp these sub dials are printed. Uh, you have your running seconds hand down here at the six o'clock position. You have your chronograph hour counter. So this does count 12 hours of chronograph time. And then you have your chronograph minute counter here with a uh, fully marked sub dial there. So that's really nice to see as well. You're going to get great accurate readings on this watch. You can also see the minute track here is broken up into sub-seconds there. So, um, yeah, you're going to be able to get a pretty accurate reading on this watch, which is really nice and something that a lot of these chronographs miss. This kind of three sub-dial layout here on the left side, that gives you that 12-hour sub-dial. So that's kind of nice to see. Uh, no more 24-hour counter, which I know a lot of people really, really dislike. Um, but other than that, Everything is done really good. Date window here at the 3 o'clock position, which I said earlier, you can get it without the date window if you prefer. Um, so, yeah, just something to consider. I think it looks really good. All the printing is nice and crisp. You can see that faux patina color there. That is green loom. And then the white numerals here, those are all loomed with BGW9. So those glow that kind of ice blue. Same with the chronograph second hand and with the subdial second hand. Those all glow with that kind of blue glow, we'll get to the loom here in just a second. The handset that they chose, really, really nice handset. Uh, syringe style handset, reaches right out to the minute track. Nice big bold hour hand. Red tip to the second hand, and that is also loomed. I've got no issues with that. Even the subdial hands, I'm not a huge fan of the style of them, but they loomed them, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure how useful that is without having the subdials actually loomed, but uh, it is what it is. 
So overall, I think the design and the proportions on the dial, they look really good. And the handset uh, is, is excellent as well, even though Loom is pretty decent. So I'm going to pop up a Loom shot here. You can see it against the Balthony on the left-hand side, and then you can see it against the Pagani design on the right-hand side, kind of somewhere in the middle. The Balthony definitely holds on stronger. That's another area where the Balthony exceeds. Uh, it just has a little bit stronger Loom. I would still say the Loom is above average for a chronograph in this price range. Um, so you're going to be pretty happy with it. Just don't expect it to be as good as the Baltanese. All right, so let's talk about the movement in this thing. So like I said earlier, the movement is the Seiko VK67 Mega Quartz. So it is this chronograph movement here with a sweeping seconds hand. It takes five times per second there. Um, I've got no issues with these movements. Their accuracy is rated at plus or minus 20 seconds per month, uh, but they run much more accurate than that. I've never had an issue with them. Three years of battery life as well. They're super easy to use, super accurate. They give everything you need. Um, and I mean, they're really, really nice. They're operated by these three crowns here at the three o'clock position. Got a screw down main crown here. Get a nice satisfying pop out there. First position does nothing. Second position changes your date. Third position sets the time. So uh, functions just as you would expect it to. It does hack the movement when you pull it out there. Um, and then you get to the chronograph function. So chronographs, they're also screw down pushers here. Um, I've had this one running for this whole time uh, as I've been doing this review and other things. So, so you can see that it's been running for about an hour and a half. Um, so yeah. It's really nice that you're able to track uh, the hour time. Uh, some of these movements, they don't include that. I think they should include it on all of them personally. So this top pusher here is for starting and stopping the chronograph function. Obviously, it's been running, so we'll stop it there. Nice, satisfying click. And then reset. You press this button down here. Everything snaps right back to the 12 o'clock position. So I'm going to show you that here. Nice, quick reset. Uh, everything aligns perfectly as well. So really satisfied with this movement again i've had no issues with them i had them in many many watches and they're great all right so let's talk about the strap on this thing so i opted for this strap here uh, i have plenty of other nylon straps they do offer this in a green and a black nylon i believe um, so i don't have many that are like this it's kind of a canvas two-piece strap it's this army green color like almost like a sage green really nice color though i like it a lot the stitching in it is done pretty nice and clean it's 20 millimeters it tapers down to 16 millimeters it is pretty stiff i'm going to say that this end here it is reinforced with leather around the holes there so those shouldn't tear or anything but that does make this part a little stiff the entire strap itself is pretty stiff but as you can see it's kind of already broken in a little bit um, i haven't worn it on this strap too much uh, just because I want something that's waterproof when I'm out in the yard. Uh, but you can see when I have worn it, it's broken in pretty nicely. So again, it's pretty stiff, but it breaks in nicely. And when it is on the wrist, it is very comfortable. Um, it has one floating keeper here, one stationary keeper, all nicely stitched in. Again, a fully bead blasted buckle, uh, nothing fancy on the buckle. It's not signed or anything like that, but it's also, it's not flopping around, so I don't care. Uh, nice thing about this though, it is quick release, so that's nice to see. And it's leather lined on the back there. So uh, nice and comfortable. Like I said, it's very stiff out of the box, uh, but it does break in nicely and it has been very comfortable for me. So uh, I actually do really like the strap. So there you go, guys. That is the Militato ML 1868-2. Uh, a great watch, in my opinion. For $100, uh, really, really good. You're getting the same case as the, uh, as the Baltany which I agree is a very nice case. You're getting a really nice military chronograph with the same movement, uh, same shape of crystal, just not so much AR coating. Getting pretty good loom on it as well. Um, so the, the, the question is, is it worth it to buy a Militado? I say yes. Is it worth it to buy the Baltany? If you're looking for the most out of the watch, I'll say yes. It's got better loom and it's got a better crystal. That's pretty much it though. Uh, everything else is probably the same. This watch cost about $150. This one costs $100. So uh, really, really close. Uh, if you want that excellent crystal, I think that's the big selling point with this Baltany model is the crystal. The crystal on this thing is just fantastic. So there you go, guys. That's kind of my thoughts on Militato and these, these military chronographs. They're very good. I think it's worth it to go to a Baltany if you're wanting the absolute best. Uh, but if you can settle for decent AR coating and decent loom, I think these Militados offer a lot of value for money. So, um, yeah, I think that's about it for me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.